Hi, I'm Annie. Today I want to talk about curiosity. Curiosity is one of my strongest qualities. It's one of my favorite things in life. It's something that gives me the most pleasure, indulging in my own curiosities, which is a very lead consume thing to say. But I see curiosity as a very powerful tool for growth and for arriving at perceptual shifts. As I was thinking about curiosity, I remembered an experience from high school. So we had yearbooks every year. When you became a senior, you were allowed to have an entire page for your yearbook page. So you got to design the page however you wanted. So my page was just a picture of me when I'm maybe about two years old and it just says curiouser and curiouser. I meant that in two ways. That I am curious and that I'm always becoming curiouser and curiouser by the day but also that life is curious. It's a crazy bizarre adventure. Another thing that I noticed is that my senior page is really different from other people's in that it's just a picture of me when I was little. Anybody flipping through these pages would not know necessarily that this was my page. It's very, very DI. It's me. It's about my experience. And it's my inside FI joke to myself about curiosity, which is really interesting compared to everybody else's pages, which were really tribe oriented. You can see this page right next to mine is, you know, the tribe, the SF, the cool things that so-and-so said, the connections, the relationships. And then, you know, mine is just like this DI, FI inside joke to myself. Anyway, back to curiosity. It's a powerful tool for growth. Reality is reality. It is what it is. What is happening is happening. And when there's pain, it's usually because there's resistance to what is happening. There's resistance to reality. Resistance causes the pain. Resistance makes the pain worse. And this is true for physical pain and mental pain. So when I have a headache and I tense up my muscles around it, it exacerbates the pain. All the musculature around the pain tenses up to sort of armor yourself from the pain, but it doesn't help. It only makes it worse. The tension makes the pain worse. You're resisting the pain. Where if you relax and open up and allow the pain to just pass through you, then it passes. It runs its course. And sometimes it even dissipates just by opening up. So it takes some focus and some concentration, but this is what I do when I'm in pain. Granted, I have never been in extreme physical pain, so I know that some people out there have been through intense extreme physical pain and maybe this principle doesn't work or maybe it's really really hard to do that in that situation when you're suffering so badly. The only way around is through and it's the same thing with emotional pain. The easiest most efficient path is to feel it and accept it. Painful emotions demand to be felt. You have to feel them. That's the only way around. You can stuff it and push it down and try to not feel it, but then that pain is going to manifest in other ways. If it's emotional pain, maybe it will manifest as physical ailment, and then you'll have to deal with it on that level. It's just simply easier and more efficient to feel the pain completely, and then you're on the other side. Even with something really extreme, like death, you'll have resistant thoughts, like, how could this happen? I can't believe this is happening. Why do people die? I mean, people die. <laughs> we all know this. People die. That's, it is what it is. I've read on so many forums when people say like, what phrases really annoy you? It is what it is really annoys people. And I kind of don't understand it. I think when you're saying it as a cop out, like it is what it is. So I'm not going to try. It is what it is. So I'm not going to do what is within my power to improve it. Yeah, I could see that would be annoying if someone is using it as a cop out, but it literally is what it is. So to me, what that means is accept reality be at peace with it, do what you can do, change what you can change, but don't resist reality because that's where the pain is. So when someone dies, there's normal grief, normal and healthy to feel grief if somebody dies or something terrible happens. Your job is to process it and allow it to pass through you. And when you resist, you just prolong the process. And it's really similar to martial arts like Aikido. I don't know if you've ever practiced Aikido. In Aikido, when someone comes towards you, you don't resist. You know, if you resist and push back, that's a big collision. So in Aikido, if someone
someone's coming at you, you just move. You move and let them go past. Or they're coming at you, you take their energy and you throw them on the floor. So you use their energy and process it, transform it, change it into something else. So you're not opposing what is. You're not opposing the reality of the opponent coming at you. You're accepting it and taking it, transforming it. And I'm starting to try to see everything that I have resistance to that way. For me, it's a lot of observer issues. The main thing is frustration and anger. And it's usually something so stupid, like my computer, my printer. Printers should work. The belief that printers should work is what is hurting me. It's not that the printer itself isn't working. Printers often don't work. It is what it is. <laughs> so am I gonna allow that to wreck me and destroy my life? Those are the moments when I need to remember this. But when it comes to emotional pain or disappointment, I find that I remember it easier. I remember not to resist emotional pain. That's become fairly automatic for me. So now my job is to do that for observer freakouts. So the resistance is inefficient. So feeling less polarized and more neutral about your own experience and your own thoughts is simply a more comfortable way to live. When you resist something, it shouldn't be like this. They shouldn't say that to me. You're really just creating pain for yourself. And there's an attachment to being right. This shouldn't be that way. My belief about this is correct and things being that way is incorrect. And then there's the saying, whoever said it, I don't know. Who said that? Would you rather be right or would you rather be peaceful? So it's not denying or stuffing down feelings or pretending that you're super happy about unpleasant circumstances. It's just more a stepping aside. And so I'm thinking about that more as I'm going out into public and I'm really triggered by these observer things. It's kind of an energetic stepping aside. It's like allowing that Aikido analogy to operate within me on sort of an energetic level, which I know is a really NF way to say what I'm trying to say, but it's just sort of um, an energetic stepping aside. Stepping aside and letting the annoyance pass. Then it's behind me and I keep going. So what the heck does this have to do with curiosity? <laughs> so curiosity is one way to cultivate this practice. And here's a recent example. So a few weeks ago, I got a massage for the first time in 11 months. I'm a massage therapist, so I've given lots of massages, but I hadn't received any body work in a long time. And honestly, I'd really neglected my body in 2020. Unexpected Etsy success was coming at me really hard and fast, and I was just trying to keep up. So I neglected some self-care and physical exercising routines. When the smoke came here on the West Coast in um, Labor Day back in September, that got me on an animal level. I know I started to clench my jaw at night. I actually slept really well during 2020, but when that smoke came, it just got me on a primal level. I mean, it's like a, a little bunny rabbit that lives in a forest and then a big smoke comes. You feel like it's the end of the world. It's dangerous. Your world is ending. Though I knew rationally that I was probably going to be okay. My house where I was was probably not going to burn down. The air was gray. It just really got me. And I started to tense up my jaw and clench my teeth that night. And that lasted for six months before I was able to break that habit of clenching my jaw at night. So I was taking that distress and fear and anxiety and I was like putting it in my muscles, storing it away. And we do that. Things that we're not dealing with consciously, we put them in our muscles. We hold them. Muscles get tight. So I got a massage for the first time in 11 months. And that was one of the things that my massage therapist said to me. He said, as I've been working with clients lately, you know, in 2020, 2021, people are having strong emotional responses because it's been a traumatic year. So just be aware of that. Drink lots of water, take care of yourself. Don't be alarmed if emotions come up. And he knew I would understand this because we're both massage therapists and this happens. And I was thinking, I'm pretty self-aware. I don't think there's anything stuffed down. Everybody has stuff in their subconscious that's stuffed down. Everybody has something. But I, I didn't think it was really going to be an issue. So I got this massage and it was so intense physically. When I went home for the evening, my partner was laughing at me because I was just useless. I couldn't even think. I basically just put a little bit of food in my mouth and went to sleep. And I slept for nine hours. And I also remember this feeling that bubbled up, an unexpected feeling. And it was this unworthiness and guilt and kind of a free-floating shame. It wasn't attached 
to any story. It was just this feeling of shame and guilt and unworthiness. And it was also kind of like pre-verbal. Like I couldn't attach it to any circumstance or story or anything. It was just pure unworthiness. Sometimes when we're young, before we can speak or before we think in words, we might have a highly emotionally charged experience. Like for example, something shame or feeling guilty. Maybe someone told us we were wrong. We were admonished and we take that on and we feel unworthy or we feel shame, but we don't have language yet. And so we just carry that feeling with us, but there's no real story attached or at least nothing we can remember. It could be something really simple, like we got a marker and we drew on the wall and mommy got mad. She was real mad. And so then we felt like we were a terrible person because mommy got so angry. But by the time you grow up, you don't remember that. So what you have is the guilt, but you don't know the why, you don't know the story. And it was kind of like that. And I was very open to knowing what the story was or to knowing more about what this guilt was or where it came from. But what was interesting was the way that I reacted to that feeling of shame bubbling up. It was an uncomfortable feeling, but my reaction was curiosity. And that happens to me more and more, especially with uncomfortable feelings. It's really the observer freakouts, like I said, that make me just go completely blind. And I can't remember to be curious and be the observer. The reaction is kind of like, oh, how interesting. What is this shame? Where did this come from? What is this? I'm, I'm so curious about this. Tell me more because that emotion is trying to tell you something. And so I was open and I was willing to understand more about what this was or why it was there. And it was uncomfortable, but at the same time, it couldn't hurt me because I was just observing it. I was feeling it, but I wasn't resisting. What resisting looks like is something like, oh no, I feel shame. Oh no, I feel unworthy. I must be unworthy. And you're cycling. You know, it's kind of like picking at a scab. You have like a little scab on your arm and you keep picking at it. It's like, oh, the shame, guilt, you know, picking at it, making it worse fixating on it. Where if you become curious about it, you automatically step outside of it and observe it. And it's inquiry. You know, there's a strong tradition of inquiry in so many philosophies and religions. It's how we understand ourselves. And it's ultimately how you break programming and evolve and grow and become a more integrated person. By being more curious about your experience than you are offended or afraid. The curiosity is greater than the fear or the horror or the resistance. When you're curious, the resistance kind of evaporates and that alleviates a lot of the pain. There's more pain if you're pushing against the thing that is pushing through you. You just say, hello, how are you? What are you trying to tell me? Come on in, you know, and it moves through. It's just so much easier. And curiosity is the tool that gets you there. And even if you know this intellectually or you want to try this curiosity practice, there's a good chance that you're going to keep forgetting. You're going to sometimes remember it and then other times discomfort and pain is going to be so extreme that you forget to do the curiosity. But after you do it enough, it just becomes automatic. And that's what this was for me. When the shame came up, it was like, oh, how interesting. What the heck is that? What is that shame? In the end, I never could attach it to a story. So it could have been pre-verbal. Could have been a shame that was born during childhood that I've carried with me this whole time. And so the only thing that I could really do as an adult is look at my congruency in reality right now. Being congruent right now in my life is, am I doing what I said I was going to do? Am I doing what I said I wanted to do? How is my self-discipline? What did I say that I wanted to do in January? What were those goals? And where am I now? And how is my self-discipline? How are my daily habits? Am I doing what I said I would do? Am I doing what I want to do? Do I need to reevaluate? Do I need to get back on track? Because as long as I'm doing my best and I'm doing what I said I was going to do, then there's no reason to feel unworthy. There's no reason to be ashamed because I'm on my journey and I'm trying. I'm taking one step after the other, improving slowly over time, and that's the best I can do. So I checked in with all that, and what I could see was really the piece of not enough self-care, not enough taking care of my body, you know, stretching and getting enough exercise, allowing my muscles to get really tense from sitting in a chair, doing repetitive tasks, and also just the trauma of 2020. It was actually the best year of my life 
life, not because it was easy, sort of because it broke a lot of things that weren't working for me. Instead of me deciding, hey, this isn't working, I need to do a lot of things differently because I didn't have the consciousness or the strength to do that, 2020 just broke it. You're not gonna do that anymore. You're not gonna do this anymore. Find a different approach, do it differently. And I did, and it was the best year of my life. My life is different now and it's better and I'm on a different path. I'm doing different things, taking new exciting opportunities, but it wasn't easy. 2020 was probably not easy for anyone. I think it's like a whole continuum and it was easier for me than it was for a lot of people, but it was still traumatic. Cried every day, lots of things to feel, feeling the collective grief of the world and just one goddamn thing after another. New surprise every morning when you open the headlines and, and see what happened in the last 24 hours. And I think I stored some of that pain in my body. Also with the inactivity and not stretching enough, that was all locked up in my muscles. And so I made some corrections to my routine and made a commitment to check in with that every day, do a lot more self-care, do stretching. As I'm undoing those spots of resistance, really listening for what's in there. I have a lot of tightness here. So when I work, uh, when I work on this spot here, does anything come up emotionally? And what is that? And what can I learn from it? What is it trying to tell me? But the reason that I'm reacting differently to things than I did in the past, the reason that I'm meeting these uncomfortable or intense emotions without resistance, I'm meeting them with more openness is because of curiosity. Because I love curiosity. It's a powerful tool. And I think that's a very, con this is so consumed sleep. This is a um, pretty NF and pretty consumed sleep. But that's me. That's, um, that's how I'm like navigating reality and processing my world. That's all. I just wanted to share how much I love curiosity. It's such a powerful tool. So think of it, you know, next time you're in a jam, get curious and see what you can learn from that approach.